I guess for everyone who's using Android, we're so used to a certain look. And after so many years, we got a major design update with the Android 12. And of course, it's going to be different depending on the manufacturer because they put their custom UI skins on top of the stock Android. Like for instance, Samsung has One UI, Xiaomi has MIUI, and OnePlus has Oxygen OS. But they're all going to be using the same functionalities and capabilities of a stock Android 12, maybe just in a different shape or form, but they should be pretty much the same. And for this review, I'm going to be using Pixel 5a, so you're going to have a pretty good idea of what to expect from Android 12. And the biggest change visually for me is the quick settings. Now the controls look like rounded tiles uh, that take up significant amount of space, which I personally like and I think it's going to be easier to tap, uh, especially if you have a bigger size screen. Uh, edit power and settings button are now at the bottom and the brightness slider is now at the top and it also got wider so it's going to be harder for you to miss it and easier to navigate. Google also added some nice animations like a ripple opening effect for edit button click. It also has ripple effect for fingerprint unlock and the ripple effect is going to start from the position of the fingerprint sensor. So for instance if I have the fingerprint sensor right at the back the ripple effect is going to start right from the center if you can see it on, on the screen. The lock screen now has a large clock that covers the whole screen and moves to the top left corner when you have any active notifications. The keyboard got rounded keys now and the app list screen hasn't changed much but it uh, got that nice uh, over scroll stretching effect uh, when you reach the end of the scroll. Now when you get to the app list screen the keyboard is gonna pop up and that's because Android 12 has always uh, show keyboard on by default uh, and it's nice if you have a long list of apps so that, that way you can easily uh, type it in and find it but I personally like to scroll so I turned it off. The settings screen also got a simple and clean look with uniform icons that makes the page look very nice and neat and uh, they also added the same uh, stretching over scroll effect as you can see on the Apple screen. Android 12 is being called by Google the most personal OS ever and that is for a reason with the introduction of Material U. Now when you apply a wallpaper the Android is gonna extract the colors from that wallpaper and you're gonna have four color palettes to choose from as well as four basic colors to choose from and when you apply it it's gonna be applicable to your clock, to your widgets, to the quick settings menu as well as the keyboard. There's also a quick switch between the light and dark mode and we also have the switch to the themed icon which transformed the original icon design on the home screen to make the icons look more uniform and uh, also apply the color that we extracted from the wallpaper. But the visual changes are not the only changes. The UI with Android 12 feels snappier as well and that is considering that I'm using Google Pixel 5a that was already pretty fast running Android 11. And the reason for that is that Google reduced the CPU time for core system services by 22%. And after I installed the update, I immediately ran the Geekbench and as you can see from the results, the single core performance is pretty much the same, but the multi-core performance jumped significantly. It went from 1330 to 1626, which is almost a 300 point jump or 22%. And that makes the UI feel much smoother and more responsive. Okay, now let's talk about another big change for this release of Android 12, and that is privacy. There has been a lot of change done in terms of privacy. And let's start with the uh, privacy dashboard that you can now see in the settings menu. Uh, if you look at it, it provides you with a chart of the uh, permissions used in the last 24 hours and you can see that we have our location, microphone and camera uh, separately and all other sensors are put in the other category. If you're going to click on the location camera or mic permission, you're going to be taken to another screen where you can see by the date and by the time uh, which apps used this permission. And if you're going to click through for any other uh, permission, you're just going to have a small notification indicating that whether this permission has been uh, accessed in the last 24 hours or not. From there, you can click on any app and allow or deny a permission. And now we have permission manager that shows you how many permissions you have and how many apps have this permission as allowed out of the total amount of apps that have that permission. Now we have two separate toggles for camera and mic permission that you can see in the same privacy settings 
and if you toggle it on or off you're gonna allow or deny these uh, permissions for all the apps that that are using it and we also can do the same for the location permission even though it's not under privacy category in the settings but under its own uh, category that's called location but uh, you can also do the same with the quick settings menu you can add those toggles uh, to your quick settings and quickly toggle on or off all three of these permissions another way of Android 12 let you know whether your camera or mic has been accessed is now we have the green dot in the top right corner that lets you know when uh, a camera or mic uh, has been accessed so like if you turn on your camera you can see that the app is notifying you that camera has been accessed and if you want to deny that permission you can just quickly swipe down click on that green dot and then deny permission from there for whatever app that is accessing that permission at the moment. Location permission has changed for the better. Now whenever app requests uh, to allow a permission we get a notification that we can either do the exact location or the approximate location and that is a very neat feature because for instance if you need to use it for certain apps you have to have the exact location like for instance for maps and navigation you need the exact location you can allow the exact location but if you have like weather apps or news apps you don't need the uh, allow you don't need to allow the app to know your exact location because you're just interested in the area that way you can give the approximate location and that is also a very neat addition to the privacy okay so now let's talk about some of the new features for android 12 and the first one is probably a long awaited one which is a scrolling screenshot so now when you want to take a screenshot of the web page that is longer than the screen size you can do the screenshot and then when you click take more you can actually select how much of that uh, active uh, window you want to uh, capture and you can save it as a screenshot for instance if you want to read an article later on or if you want to take some notes the next feature or more like a widget that you can place on your home screen is the conversation widget that when you place on the home screen and you get a new conversation you can easily preview it see who it's coming from and see the beginning of the message you can also adjust the size of it to to get a little bit more of the message but that's just a, one of the nice additions to this android 12. the next on the list is the nearby share feature for wi-fi and don't get me wrong the QR code is still there but now we can use nearby share feature to share our Wi-Fi and I think it's going to be much easier now to share with multiple people instead of running around and scanning the QR code. Next feature is face detection for auto rotate and I think that's also a very neat feature. Uh, now you don't have to turn off your auto rotate whenever you want to use your phone let's say in bed when you holding it in the landscape mode uh, when you turn that on it can detect your face and when you're laying down and you're holding your phone uh, in the landscape mode but you need it to be in the portrait mode uh, it's actually working pretty well uh, from my experience sometimes it doesn't catch but it happens very rarely and most of the time it's a pretty neat feature and as I mentioned you don't have to turn off your auto rotate and that was it for my review of Android 12. I hope you enjoyed the review and you found it useful. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up to help YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell to get notified next time a new video comes out. Thank you guys so much again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.